Welcome to Winning STL, where we have conversations about how St. Louis can best compete and win in the battle for talent, jobs, growth, and equity. Winning STL is presented by Purina, who creates richer lives for pets and the people who love them, and is proudly called St. Louis home since 1894. Joining me today is Andrew Martin, Chancellor of Washington University. In 2019, he was named the 15th Chancellor since WashU was founded in 1853. Chancellor Martin, thanks for joining us today, and thank you for hosting us at the brand new WashU Neuroscience Research Building. Thanks for having me. So, looking into this interview, um, it was interesting to to watch and some of the scientists involved in this when they asked about when asked about what their goals were, what they wanted to do. Uh, one of them was, we want to change the world. And I thought, that means a little, that means something a little more when you're doing this kind of work. What's your take on this operation and the importance of it? Well, th this is an incredible uh, facility and is really the physical manifestation uh, of a truly outstanding group of faculty uh, who have been doing world class neuroscience research uh, here at Washington University uh, for many, many years. Uh, you know, this building has over 100 principal investigators. Uh, who have brought their laboratories here. And we've organized them not by department, but actually in terms of thematic areas uh, of research. Uh, so we have people from different departments, whether it's psychiatry or anesthesiology or neuroscience, who are all working on the same types of questions, co-located so they can work together. Right? And wh why do we do this work? I mean, we have the best neuroscience research in the world here in St. Louis at Washington University. And what's it all about? Well, at the highest level, it's all about trying to figure out how the brain works, right? The brain is what makes us human. I mean, some of the greatest mysteries about the human experience are all about what happens in our brain when it's working well, and at times, what happens when the brain isn't working uh, uh, so well. And so the scientists here um, are working on those fundamental puzzles, and they're working on those fun fundamental puzzles uh, uh, in order to help develop treatments for some, some really terrible diseases. Uh, Alzheimer's disease, for example, mental health problems and the like. And so, you know, the science that takes place here in the Fort Labs is, is just incredible. So, so WashU is leading you know, the world in neuroscience research. How do you make sure you're always moving forward and evolving? Because there's a lot of pressure, I would think, when you've, when you've reached these, these levels. Sure. I mean, this is an outstanding uh, medical school, uh, one of the very finest medical schools in the world. Uh, and if we're not moving forward, we're falling behind. The most important thing that we do is that we are constantly attracting the very best scientific talent to come to the university. Every year we're hiring more faculty and these people are coming to St. Louis, they're bringing their laboratories here, um, and they're also joining the St. Louis community uh, by building life and family here uh, and investing uh, here in St. Louis. Uh, we are relentlessly hiring people all the time. That's why we need to continue to build our physical plant in order to be able to accommodate the science that these individuals are going to do. Chancellor Martin, when you came here, you again came to a great university, but you had your own goals. What what would you say has been most important for you in the in the years that you've been here in the role that you're in now? So I, I came to St. Louis uh, in 2019 as a university's chancellor. I first moved to St. Louis 30 years ago. I came here as a graduate student uh, in arts and sciences uh, here at WashU. Uh, I had spent most of my adult life uh, here in St. Louis. When I came back to the university as chancellor in 2019, I really called on our community to focus on three critical areas. First is our academic distinction. How could we be the very strongest academic institution we can possibly be? That's true here on the medical campus and also true on the other side of the park uh, on the Danforth. Uh, campus, and I set some ambitious goals uh, for us to continue to get better every year in terms of the research we're doing and the education that we're providing uh, to, our, to our students. Second area that we focused on is student access. How do we make sure that a Washington University education is affordable for anybody with talent who deserves to come to Washington University? And we've made some really great strides in that area. And then the third area that we focused on is our relationship to St. Louis. You know, we are Washington University in St. Louis, and at my inaugural address back in 2019, I called for us to become Washington University for St. Louis. Right. How do we use our education, research, patient care mission? 
How do we use our presence as the second largest employer in St. Louis to make this community even stronger? That, that might surprise people. I, I looked before this discussion. It's roughly 20,000 employees, I, I think, tied to the university, which is a large amount. Number two, as you mentioned, yes. pretty significant. Think of the jobs created in building this yes. this beautiful edifice that we're in today. So there, the impact financially is, is certainly, uh, and culturally, is very significant here. We have a very significant uh, impact uh, to, the, to the St. Louis economy. Um, you know, we believe uh, our analysis shows that we have between direct and indirect, we keep about 50 to 55,000 people uh, here in St. Louis uh, employed. Wow. Uh, you, you know, either, you know, our employees are working on some of the projects we're doing, working for the companies that we do business with when we're going out uh, and procure. And we t attract a lot of talent to St. Louis. Uh, we bring a lot of faculty and professional staff here, you know, but we also have 15,000 students, half of whom are undergraduates. Half are graduate professional students, right? And they're choosing to come to St. Louis because of the university. Chancellor, your focus on educational access, that, that's an area that, from what I've read, has really um, been impactful. Yes, we've been able to make a lot of progress really over the last 10 years. Uh, you know, we're an institution today that for a talented undergraduate student, if you come from a family with, say, $75,000 of income or less, you can attend Washington University free of charge. Tuition, room, board, books, study abroad, laptop, we'll take care of it, uh, such that every student with talent has an opportunity uh, to come here. For students who make, families make a little bit more money than that, uh, just this academic year, we were finally able to announce that we're never going to ask an undergraduate student to take out a student loan to attend Washington University. So we're going to be able to take that gap in funding and fill it up uh, with grants and scholarships. Again, so every talented student uh, can come here. And it's made the university a much richer place. You know, we're attracting students from here in the city of St. Louis, attracting students from outstate rural Missouri uh, who are coming here and being able to get this world-class education at a truly affordable price. So I, I wanted to, to move to uh, one of your uh, priorities, which was in St. Louis for St. Louis. Yes. What are some other areas that you think you'd like to see WashU continue to develop and connected to St. Louis? Yeah, I'd like us to continue progress in a couple of different areas. Student access is an important one uh, and one where we've really made some really significant uh, uh, progress. Um, one area where we've done some additional work that I'm really proud of is our School of Continuing and Professional Studies. Okay. Right. This is a unit that used to be called University College. Uh, we've renamed it to give it a name that actually makes some sense. And what continuing and professional studies is all about uh, uh, is to help work with adult learners, you know, who are interested in upskilling uh, so that they can have even more successful careers. Uh, what that is doing is opening that educational part of our mission to a broader set of students than we had been working with traditionally. Uh, CAPS is doing really terrific work working with refugee populations, people who are interested in careers uh, in nursing and in the health professions, uh, people who work in healthcare administration, information technology, cybersecurity. Some are degree programs, others are certificate programs, all of which are geared to help people uh, accelerate what they're able to do uh, in, their, in their career. So that's, that's one example uh, of one of the things uh, that we're doing. You know, we're sitting here today in the Cortex Innovation District. You know, one of the other areas where I think the university has done very good work but could do even more is how can we work to help curate this ecosystem, which is going to help attract businesses here, here to St. Louis, and how can we launch businesses here in St. Louis. St. Louis, you've been here before. You've also now been here for another five years. What do you think that we're doing well, that we should be doing more of, um, doubling down on perhaps? I think one of the things that we're, that, we're, that we're doing well, and I think a lot has been accomplished over the last four or five years, is I think for the first time, uh, at least in my lifetime, the business community and the nonprofit community are really speaking with a singular voice about where we're going, right? We're all about driving equitable economic growth here in St. Louis. Uh, we're all working in different ways to do that. When we go outside of St. Louis, we're not competing with one another, but we're rather speaking with a singular voice. I think that that is necessary uh, for us to be able to get the type of economic growth that, that, that we are looking for and to create the type of community 
uh, that we that we aspire to be. And I'm really enthusiastic uh, about the work that's been done, primarily led by Greater St. Louis Inc., uh, but with lots and lots of members of our community. I, I guess on the other side, what are areas that you'd like to see uh, political business leaders, the community prioritize to be better at? I think there's a couple of things that we need to look at. Uh, you know, obviously the situation with crime in our city, particularly in certain areas, mm -hmm. uh, needs to be addressed. Um, uh, and that has to be a multifaceted approach. Um, you know, we need we need to look at some of those root causes uh, uh, and, and do work to sort of attack uh, some of some of those issues having to do with with education and access to jobs and economic opportunity. Right. But we also have to approach things from a practical standpoint on the side of policing, uh, prosecuting uh, those responsible and uh, and so forth. That That's a really important issue. I mean, it's important in the lived lives of many, many members of our community, mm -hmm. but it's also important in terms of the perception about how people outside of St. Louis, how they think about what this community, what this community is. I think that that's one. I think a second place where we need to do better is in transportation. I mean, how can we get people uh, to, to workplaces a far more efficient uh, way? And we've made a lot of investments uh, in public transportation uh, here in St. Louis. Uh, I wouldn't say it's perfectly optimized, um, that I think there's really more that we can be doing uh, to help get people uh, where they need to be uh, in order to be able uh, uh, to have the greatest uh, economic uh, opportunity. Um, uh, you know, I think transportation is important here, here in the city of St. Louis. Um, uh, it's also true in terms of how we're connected with the rest of the world. And again, we've seen some good progress. You know, we've got a new airport. Uh, that, that seems to be heading in the right direction. Of course, we've got our first international flight mm -hmm. in well over a decade here in St. Louis, but we need more of that, right? The more we can be interconnected, uh, particularly through the air, I think that's all to the good. Um, you mentioned about our reputation and, and, you know, we have some things that are against us in crime data, just from the narrow boundaries of yes. the city. Um, I think to my personal view is two things can be true at the same time. We do have a crime issue, and it's also maybe exacerbated by those by yes. those factors. Is it something that um, that we have to overcome when we're looking to bring students in from around the country and even around the world? Absolutely. Uh, in fact, our biggest headwind in terms of recruiting talent, and that's true in terms of the students that we're bringing here, uh, but it's also true when we're recruiting faculty and staff who are going to come to the university. The biggest hurdle is the perception. Uh, of St. Louis. And the easiest way to dispel that uh, is to get them to make the first visit to St. Louis. Uh, when people can come to this city and, exp and, and, and to explore the neighborhoods and see what it's like to be able to walk to a great place like the Loop and be able to walk to work on the campus or to live here in the Central West End, uh, commute to the medical school, it's a pretty special environment. But we've got to get people here to experience it first because of all you're doing is Googling St. Louis, right? Right. Those crime things are what comes up at the very top of the list. So the good news is if we can get them to take a visit, they like it. We can close. <laughs> we Absolutely. can close it. We can close it. Uh, Chancellor Martin, thank you so much. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you for hosting us in this beautiful and impactful facility. And, and thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you, Ian.